Hey guys, Language Hacker here. Mini sets primed to come out today. So I thought I'd give you guys a review of all the cards from a standard point of view so you guys can understand how impactful the mini set's gonna be, if they're only broken cards, what's cool, and basically give you the rundown of everything that you should know about the mini set. So let's hop right in and look at the cards that have been revealed. Okay, here we go. I am using uh, out of cards. The website here has them nicely set up. I can give you the link below if you're interested. Um, but let's dive right in and talk about the cards. Zoom in a little. Uh, they are sorted by class, so we'll be going one class at a time. Each class has gotten three class cards. Wings, let's start with Demon Hunter. Wings of Hate, one mana spell. It's a ranked spell. We haven't seen new ranked spells being added yet. Uh, summon two 1-1 one -one fell wings, and this upgrades when you have five mana. And again, when you have 10 mana, and I believe it is two, then three, then four fell wings. Fell wings are just one, one demons, just some tokens. Um, this is a pretty good tempo game plan, right? One mana, two, two. We've uh, across two minions. We've seen this being played. Uh, Wolper Tinger uh, is just good in face hunter. Now, that being said, this doesn't really fit in the current iterations of Demon Hunter, so this might be a bit more support for token DH. Um, the card is good. Will it fit into that deck? Will that deck be good? Maybe, maybe not, but the card is definitely good. Um, there's a lot of synergies with this. It discounts Urzul Giant. You can use it together with the Kurtris uh, Demon Render Hero to get extra hero powers. Um, if you have a bunch of stuff on board, you can use it with Field of Strife if you really want. There's a lot of ways to use this. Really cool. Flag Runner. It, the list goes on and on. Most of those are generally just used for Arena, but maybe there is a token deck in the works now with some extra support. Next up, Razor Glaive Sentinel. 4 mana 5-4. After you play the left or rightmost card in your hand, draw a card. Permit of 5-4, not exciting. Drawing cards, kind of exciting. Um, also exciting in a deck that will play a bunch of cheap cards, like a token aggro deck. So this could be a nice little draw engine without having to run stuff like Spectral Sight, Need for Greed, other cards. You might still want to run Skull in this deck because Skull is just really, really good. Um, especially if you're still running Demon Render, Kurtis Demon Render, you might still run the uh, Felfire Deadeye and the Expendable Performer. So you do have some OTK potential. So you might still want Skull in that, but this is probably an acceptable draw tool. Um, I think it's good that it's 4 mana. If it was a 3 mana 3-4, I'd be kind of upset because it's just easier to squeeze in and, and draw off of it. Now, there is a, a limitation, obviously, because drawing the left, uh, using the left or rightmost card might not always be useful to you. Um, it's the outcast theme that they're going with, but this card is probably acceptable. Yeah, akin to Stargazer Luna, for example, which is in Wild now, but it was uh, the rightmost card in your hand will draw a card if you play it. So it's a similar effect, except it uses both the left and the right side. So it's a bit more flexible, but it is more expensive. Next up, Keen Reflex, two mana spell. Deal one damage to all minions. Uh, honorable kill, gain plus one attack this turn. Um, this is interesting as a card because it can be used as removal or damage burst right let's say you set up uh wings of hate times two on turn on a 10 mana turn right you summon six foul wings you keen reflex that's six damage it's not bad it's kind of a weird combo like a three card combo to gain six so you probably don't really want to use it just to kill off your own minions and gain attack um it'll more likely see play in um some removal decks right some a deck that wants to remove the board take time and then do some sort of combo um because this is just all right, it's not insane. You, maybe this is like a one of, maybe you don't even run this at all. Uh, you probably just want to run Immolation or instead of this. Uh, and there's plenty of removal tools that DH still has. But, mm, eh, because honorable kills are not always easy to do. Like it, this does scale with spell damage, Talented Arcanist, you can, I don't know, Morgs. I don't know what's still being run right now, Blood Mage, Thalnos. So there are ways to buff this a little bit, but the animal attack, extra text here doesn't really make sense in an otk deck where you're just going to kill your opponent from full health anyways so this might be i don't know some sort of tool that you can use as, as a little bit of extra burst damage in the token deck i'm not sure it's interesting it's also entirely possible that this is support for something that we haven't seen yet i.e something that will happen come uh, rotation in the next month or two it's an interesting deck a uh, card I don't think it's very good right now, but maybe this gets better with something that we're not aware of yet. So, in summary, good, decent, meh. Might be a, might be a token deck in the works here. Some extra card draw and some extra support. We'll see. Next up, Druid. Boomkin, I like the name, taking its uh, roots from WoW. Um, 
5 mana 4 5, choose 1, restore 8 health to your hero, or deal 4 damage. It's pretty good. 5 mana 4 5, deal 4 damage is very good. It's just good, right? It's flanking strike, but probably better. Maybe not better than flanking strike, actually. Hmm. Whatever. It's similar to flanking strike. It's 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 a pretty acceptable card. If you're low on health, which you might be against something like a face hunter or something, you could have a Moomkin heal up eight. The problem is you also want to deal with board. So you can't do both of these unless you have like Fangel on the board, and we're not running Fangel because Fangel rotated like years ago. Huh. This is a good card, but I don't see how this fits into Druid right now. It definitely doesn't fit in Beast Druid. And this can go face, actually. That's, that's worth noting. This can go face. I, I don't think it fits in aggressive style Druids. And I think it doesn't quite fit in ramp Druids that we're running right now anyways. So maybe there is some sort of choose one deck that becomes playable um, after rotation. Because right now this, despite being a good card, does not, I think, take a slot over the other card that we're running. So good card, but not sure where it fits in. A raid Negotiator. 4 mana 3, 4. Oof. Battle Cry Discover Choose 1 card. It has both effects combined. I believe there's 13 or 14 Choose 1 cards. I did review this, uh, including the Boomkin that just is about to come out. Most of them are pretty good. In fact, the majority of them are pretty good. However, you still have to pay mana for that and for this. Um... And I don't really want to pay a 4 mana... Th I don't want to play a 4 mana 3-4. Um, again, we probably don't want to fit this in any decks. This probably becomes playable after rotation. Because having a specific card's effects combined can be quite good. Maybe not Boomkin in particular. But there are some, some options that are very, very nice. Um, like at the top end, we can think of Scenarius. Uh, Ancient of War becomes a 7 mana 10-10. Runic carvings, unless that rotates, I should double check that. There, there's ways that this can be good, but there's no way to fit this in, in any current Druid decks. And I don't think it's even that good currently. It's like, okay. So, not yet. No. And what is this? Scale of Onyxia, 7 mana spell. Fill your board with 2 1 whelps with Rush. Reminds me of uh, Locust Swarm. Swarm of Locusts, I forget what it was called. It was a 6 mana Hunter spell that filled your board with 1-1 one, one Locusts that had Rush. And this is just a step up for 1 mana. Um, conveniently 7 mana, which means if you play Overgrowth on 4, Scale of Onyxia is playable on 7. This is good, right? One of the things Druid is lacking is removal. So you can ramp up and then you kind of have to do some stuff, right? Double Scenario Ward, get some Strongman down, maybe get an Arcanist going. And this is just ramped, clear. That's it. I think it's just good. Uh, I don't know if we can run two of them in current lists, but this is at least a one of. This is just... I mean, 14 damage. It's a bit of flexibility. You can't deal odd number... Yeah, like an, an odd odd damage, right? Because it's in instances of two, but this is still pretty good. This is a great way to just clear a board after ramping up. Seems good. And even if you don't ramp up, right? Like, let's say you're facing an aggro deck. You just bloom, bloom coin scale... Clear most of the board, you have a couple of two ones left over, you buy yourself some time. This is just a good card. Yeah, good card. So, not super exciting stuff in Druid, um, except for this, which is okay. Hunter! Hunter, Hunter, Hunter. Alright, Dragon Bane Shot, two mana, deal two damage. Can go face, of course. Honorable Kill, add a Dragon Bane Shot to your hand. Um, so, kind of an echo like effect, um, but it has to be Honorable Kill. For that to happen you could consider running this in face hunter but it's kind of weird because the honorable kill doesn't really matter right because if you plan on just killing your opponent you don't really want to honorable kill the minions you want the damage to go face so the upside would be dealing two damage for two mana which isn't that exciting um if that was really exciting we would be running arcane shots in face hunter and i think at some point we did but we have not for a while so this does not accept me too much. Now, that being said, this could fit into something like a Quest Hunter, which has been pushed a little bit out of the meta. I, I think some... I, I have seen some people hanging around High Legend with Quest Hunter, but I don't think it's performing particularly well against a lot of the meta decks. So this does help Quest Hunter. By how much? I'm not sure. We'll have to see once the uh, set comes out, see how the meta shifts, and then decide if Quest Hunter does fit into that meta, meta slot. But the card is good. 
regardless of whether or not it goes in face hunter or quest hunter this this could be good particularly in quest hunter in face hunter not so much cool next up pet collector five mana three three battle cry summon a beast from your deck that costs five or less it's a half it's half of a ga and it doesn't get rush either um so you can build your deck in a way that just utilizes this right you run only the five mana beasts you run the i don't know uh, moonfang teacher's pet uh trampling rhino um what else are we running uh, imported tarantula stuff like that it's not bad um is it what hunter wants to be doing no so we're probably not running this Yeah, we're probably not running this. Moonfang is out. Right, but the mini set is uh the mini set is not during rotation. Mini set is before rotation. So there will be a period of time where we can run this. Um, I don't know. I'm not super excited about this. This seems it's a good card, actually. Cause you get your five cost beast from your deck onto the board, and it's a three three. But you don't run this in face under request hunter, so this has to be in like some slow list. And I every time this comes up, I, I say the same thing. Slow Hunter, eh, pass. Um, I'll, I'll, th there are a couple of creators who are focusing on only Hunter de decks, so we can maybe see if they have something to say about this. Card is good, but not what Hunter wants to be doing. Next up, Furious Howl. I like the art. Two mana spell, draw a card. Repeat until you have at least three cards. That's pretty good, right? That's very good. Dump your hand, play Furious Hell. Seems good. Even if you have another card left over, like, like let's say Quick Shot, because this does have anti synergy with Quick Shot. If your hand is Quick Shot Howl, it's still a two mana draw too. And you can still Quick Shot face and then Howl and then still draw three. So it's. This is a very good card. Um, you run this probably in Face Hunter and in, in Quest Hunter. You probably don't run it in the Slow Hunter deck, but again, I don't know what that looks like. This is just a good card. Like, this is, this is almost the insta-5. It's at least a 4, and it might be a 5. This is, this is a very good card. Cool. So Hunter's got some spice. Next up, Mage. Hale. Hale? Halo? Matron Protectorate. 8 mana, 4, 12 dragon. Ooh, 8 mana, actually. Most dragons with a 4, 12 set line are 9. Um... Except for Zoraku. Anyways, after you cast a spell, deal 4 damage randomly split among all enemies. That can go face. Interesting. But 8 mana, kick W. Also, what spells are we using, right? Are we saving like a full hand of flurries and hot streaks and then popping off? Probably not. That seems way too slow. Now, we should talk about this having synergy with a card on the right, Dragfire Amulet. 10 mana spell, tradable, which helps for expensive stuff. Discover two dragons, summon them. So you could play this and get some, some of these dragons, but you don't have much mana left over. You could use Mana Biscuit, you're right. Mana Biscuit could work with the, the Matron Protectorate, but it just seems like not a great win con, right? Like, let's compare it to something, um, we've been seeing some Hero Power Mage top out with uh, Rune of the Archmage, right? And that's barely playable. And if you replace Rune of the Archmage with this or this, these are much less impactful than Rune of the Archmage, right? They're more consistent, but they don't have immediate board impact most of the time. So I don't think I like these too much. It's pretty cool. If the meta slows down, which they have been saying on Twitter that they want to slow down the meta, make it a bit more... Well, they didn't necessarily say slow it down, but they want to make it more board-centric, less from hand stuff. When that meta happens, i.e. post-rotation, we will maybe be able to see something like a Drakefire Amulet run. But right now, I don't want these cards. They don't do stuff. Much too slow, not impactful enough. There might be some cool OTK stuff you can do with this, but... That's a distant sort of thing that we're not worrying about right now. Deep Breath, 5 mana spell. Deal 1 damage to a minion and its neighbors. Improve my number of other spells in your hand. So this is a poopy fire sale. Cool. Moving on. It's Kona Cold with fire that scales a bit. And it doesn't freeze. And it costs more. Yeah, I don't like this. Too expensive. Way too expensive. Great removal. 
if you have a bunch of spells, but like way too expensive. Synergizes with what? Spell Mage? But I don't want to pay five mana for spells and Spell Mage. I'd rather just run Fire Sale. So all three of these don't seem very good. Mage not looking too crispy. Paladin. Battle Viker. Two mana, one three. Battle card, discover a holy spell. Uh, I'm not going to show you the whole pool, but the uh, the pool isn't great. I'll give you that. There's four one mana spells already that are holy that you don't want. So this doesn't seem good. Um, in any case, you don't want to run this in a tempo deck. Maybe you run this in Liberum Paladin because the holy spells have upsides, right? You can get Liberum of Wisdom, uh, Justice, and Hope. And all three of those could be useful depending on the situation. And you don't hate playing something on two instead of hero powering. So maybe playable, but definitely not in, in, in some of the other decks. Like this won't be in a tempo deck. Yeah, this will be good for Arena too, I suppose. All right, next up, Storm and Avenger, 3 minute 1 5. After you cast a spell on this minion, it gains plus 2 attack. So on board, it's immediately a 1 5, but if you buff it, it's a 3 minute 3 5, barring any of the buffs that you actually get from it. So it's not bad, actually. It's got a big booty. Hand buff. This with Dumbledore Bridge is good. This is probably decent. This is probably decent. You probably run this in Hand Buff Paladin. Or Buff Paladin in general, not necessarily Hand Buff Paladin. It's not bad. Not bad. Again, might not see play now until rotation, but once rotation hits, this will be pretty good. Ring of Courage, two mana spell. It's a tradable spell. Give a minion plus one plus one. Repeat for each enemy minion. Okay, this is good with exactly Blade Master Samuro. And that's about it. I don't want this card in my deck. I don't want this card in my deck at all. No. I don't want this deck at all. Also, worth noting that this scales. It, it's not just the first spell. If you cast more spells on it, it gains more attack. But I don't like this. This Get, get this out of here. This is... No. Mm -mm. The fact that it's tradable makes it slightly less bad. Because when you draw it, you can put it back in your deck. But you could also just not put it in your deck in the first place. So, Paladin's looking okay, but not... Again, not exciting. Not, not too many exciting things so far. The most exciting thing is Furious Howl and Scale. And the rest is... Hmm. Okay, let's move on. Priest. Mida, pure light. Six mana, four, six. Divine shield and lifesteal. Dangerous combo. Death rattle. Shuffle a fragment into your deck. It resummons Mida when drawn. Now, you don't see the, frag uh, the, the thing here, but it is a holy spell. That fragment is a holy spell, which means you can tutor it with um, uh, the five mana taunt guy. The five mana, five, five taunt. I know exactly what it's called. The one that draws a shadow spell and a holy spell. So six mana, four, six. Eh. Divine shield. Better. Life steal. Okay. We're talking. This is thick. This, this is pretty good. And it just infinitely shuffles, right? If it doesn't get silenced or transformed. And you can res it. Right? With raise dead. And you can reproc with Zyrella, the hero. This is a really good card. Is Quest Priest good? Not really, but this card is pretty good. And again, once the power level kind of goes down post rotation and we do get into more board centric decks, this will be very good in Priest. So this is quite good. This is a very good card. Hmm. Hmm. Very good. There's also not that many six mana cards uh, for the quest, so this could be an extra one. This is pretty good. I like this. Uh, next up, Light Maw, another Drake. 4 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Battle Cry, if you're holding a Holy and a Shadow Spell, deal 3 damage to all other minions. Akin to Dustbreaker, except the restriction is changing from holding a Dragon to holding a Holy and a Shadow Spell. There's a pretty high number of Holy and Shadow Spells. This isn't too difficult to set up, but it is not, I would say, trivial. Um, obviously, the 5 mana, 5-5 five, five that draws you a Shadow Spell and a Holy Spell is good. But that means you're A-wing the board on turn 6 with this. So you're not playing this on 4 unless you've already drawn the 2 spells already. And if you draw the 2 spells, you're probably not doing much on turns 1, 2, 3 in the first place. The effect is good. The restriction is not too bad. I don't think we play it right now. 
might slot into Quest Priest. The current iterations are running some Holy Spells and some Shadow Spells. This is okay. It's not good. Okay, it's not great. The effect is good, but it it, it, mm, it, it doesn't it doesn't speak out to me, you know. Um, once again, post rotation. This is probably just gonna be good enough, but right now we're not running it. And it's probably not better than like a hysteria right now. Now, does this have to be better than a hysteria? You could have hysteria and this. No, it doesn't have to be better, but it's not exciting enough to play right now, and it might be acceptable enough post rotation. Next up, Horn of Rathian, three mana spell. Draw a minion. Okay, I'm listening. If it's a dragon, summon two two and whelps with rush. This card is poop. Um, that being said, there's not many dragons in the pool like that you want to play right now. Most of the dragons are either too expensive to see play because they're too slow, or you could make a draw the Nether Drake. But I don't want to reduce. I don't want to remove all the other minions from my deck to guarantee a dragon draw, which means we're running this with the dragon with other minions, and then it's going to be a three mana draw minion. I don't like that. So eh. You could slot into something like a Miracle Priest as a poopy insight, but I'd rather just have insight. Yeah, I'd rather just have insight. No, I don't like this. Um, post rotation? Who knows? Maybe. Again, it's a matter of what decks can be playable right now versus post rotation. And I'm going to bring bring this up a lot because rotation's happening soon, so we're going to have a short meta where maybe not even that sure we're gonna have a short meta where we have access to everything that we currently have and then once the rotation happens we'll get a new expansion with a bunch of stuff leaving which means that these cards even though they might be lower power level and not as exciting as other cards available now they will become the most exciting cards available uh likely so right now no but if we slow down the meta get some dragons in the deck sure this is fine so no no yes even now, you might run it in. You run run it in Quest Priest, for example. Um, but these two, I'm on the fence about. This would require some testing, because it, you, you kind of have to have a feel for this. See how often you draw it, how often it's active, and so on and so forth. So this, this is kind of a field card. This is good. This is meh. Actually, it's not even meh. It's bad. Next up, Rogue, Smokescreen. Eight mana spell. Draw five cards. Trigger any death rolls drawn. This is almost an insta, like, one. Um, you can do some cute stuff with Lorekeeper, Pole Kelt, put some Owls in your deck, throw in a Cairn, and then play this after you have your deck um, flipped with Pole Kelt. Pole Kelt on 5, Prep Smokescreen on 8. Eh, probably not. You can make a full Death Rattle deck, and then just hope that this hits, but we're not making plays until turn 8, so that doesn't seem very good either. Interesting card, maybe there's some combo you can do with it after rotation, but right now, meh. SI7 Smuggler. I like the art for this. Uh, three mana, one, three minion. Battle cry, summon a random minion with cost equal to the amount of SI7 cards you've played this game. This is just a good card. Um, the SI7 cards mostly just synergize with each other, and this is an extra one, which makes the rest of the, SI the, rest of the SI7 cards better. And because you're running the other SI7 cards, this card's pretty good too, right? Seems fine. The card's just good. It's not insane. But it's good. It becomes really good. Um, so early on, it just progresses quest, gets you the uh, the gadgets, the gizmos. Um, and late game, it becomes really good, right? Let's say you've played six or seven cards already. This summons Chonkers, which is really good refill. Uh, before, if you have your board removed, you, most of your refill is generally what the um, the SI7, uh, the format of 3-3 that grows based on other SI7 cards you've played. Um, so the, the threat density was low if your board got cleared a couple times. But this way, this is just good. You get a quite quite a big chonker late game. In early game, you just spend mana completing the quest. Great card. Tooth and the Farian. Three mana spell. Deal three. This can go face. Honorable kill. Discover a spell from another class. This is poop. Three mana deal three. Not very efficient. The honorable kill is nice, but Rogue doesn't really care about doing this. Rogue likes tempo. And this is not a very good tempo card. It can be a value card, and you can also discover a spell from another class. But it's really slow. Every rug we've seen for, like, the past who knows how long is just about tempo or combo. And this might buy you time to do some combo. Maybe you find some cool spells to add to your combo, but it's just not exciting. Too inflexible, too slow. 
Cool. Next up, Shaman. Five mana. Spell. Don't stand in the fire. Sorry, don't stand in the fire! There's an exclamation mark. Deal 10 damage, randomly split among all enemy minions. Overload 1. Volcano on crack. Seems good. The card is good. So step 1, card is good. Step 2, what do we play this in? It's a fire spell. Makes multicaster better. Could put it in uh, combo draw, draw decks. Do we want to run this in Burn Shaman? Buy ourselves time? Quest Shaman? It is an overload card. It's kind of slow. The The upside of playing Quest Shaman um, is that your entire deck is very cheap, so there's a lot of flexibility, and this reduces flexibility because you have to spend 5 mana on it. So I don't I don't know if we fit this in Quest Shaman. Bolner Shaman? Then you could slot in Multicaster as well? Perhaps. We don't know what Control Shaman looks like right now because it doesn't really exist. So we would have to see how this fits in after rotation. I don't think this fits in most of the current decks. You might be able to slot in Bolner, switch up some of the, the way the deck looks, switch up how the deck looks so that you can take use of Multicaster. It is a good card. I'm not sure where it fits in. Uh, Bracing Cold, two mana spell. It's a frost spell. Restore five health to your hero. Reduce the cost of a random spell in your hand by two. Interesting. There's some uses for this. Um, so the fact that it's Frost means you can use it with Multicaster, obviously. Um, discounts another spell, so you pay two mana to get two mana later. Can be useful for burns, uh, like burn decks. Save some mana and then do a nice little pop-off turn with spell damage. Have some extra burn cards. He Restore five health, not super relevant, but again, if we end up getting a board-centric meta where control exists, that's not bad. Reducing the cost of random spell can be good as well. Um... You can discount what stuff like Dunk Tank, people running a Bolner Shaman right now, Bolner OTK Shaman, which makes Dunk Tank easier to corrupt. Uh, the card's not bad. The card's not great. But I don't know where it fits. Which I've been saying for quite a few of these cards, so maybe there's going to be a lot of cool stuff post expansion. Power level's decent, but it doesn't really fit into what you want, what you want to do right now. Next up, Spirit Mount, two mana spell. Give a minion plus one plus two and spell damage plus one. When it dies, summon a spirit raptor. So the spirit raptor is also a one two with one spell damage. Buff shaman doesn't really exist. This is too expensive just to get a spell damage because you'd rather run something like a nova zapper. So there's not a reason really to play this. Um, if there are good aggressive one mana cards, then you could do that into Spirit Mount, but there's not really that many. So once again, maybe something changes post-rotation, but right now it does not really fit into anything that we want to be doing. So for two mana, you get a total of two four stats and spell damage one across two bodies, which isn't bad, but not what we want to do right now. Maybe in a slightly aggressive deck that ends up burning out your opponent, this could be good, but right now we don't have that. Warlock. Infestation. Uh, I believe Korra said that these this was initially called Ultimate Infestation, and it did something a little different. I think it uh, it dealt three, summoned three, three, eight, three M's, and you drew three or something like that, which is kind of funny. Uh, anyways, that's not what it is. It's a six mana card, Infestation. Summon a three three Dread Imp to attack each enemy minion. Okay, so Soul Mirror esque, where you summon something for each thing your opponent has, but it's not this. It's not a copy. It's a three three Imp. It's a fell spell. Fell spell has synergy with the uh, fell fire in the hole and with the the six mana three seven void taunt thingy that casts your highest fell spell in your hand. Grave defiler one mana two one. Add a copy of a fell spell to your hand that you already have. Eh, again, not really what what warlock wants to be doing. This doesn't really slot into quest. And nor fatigue. Nor Owl TK. So once stuff rotates, this might be pretty good. Right now, not really. Curse of Agony. This is a really, really cool card. One mana spell. Shuffle three Agonies into the opponent's deck. They deal fatigue damage when drawn. And my understanding is that it's uh, increasing fatigue damage. So the first Agony they draw is equal to the amount of fatigue damage they would have taken if they had fatigue there, which would be one. The second Agony would then 
take the counter after the first one. So the second one will deal two, the third one will deal three, the and so on and so forth. So you actually stack up fatigue draws in your opponent's deck before you get to fatigue, which is really, really cool. Um, and it does make way for like, uh, like a reverse, it, it's not really a reverse OTK, but it, as your opponents draw towards the end of the deck, they just start dying, which is really cool. Akin to Bomb Warrior, but it's a lot cheaper and it's easier to do in Warlock because you can just tap, draw your deck and do it. Now the downside is that your opponent could just not draw very quickly, or you could, your opponent could heal and offset this. So you need another win condition on top of this. Yeah, you could do with this Tamsin. You do this with Tamsin because it is a shadow spell, so you could make copies. So in total, you could do four um, Curse of Agonies in one game. Maybe more if you run Discover cards. But I don't know. Right now, it's just kind of like a weapon row counter or a counter to OTK decks because it, decks that want to draw their whole deck and kill you are something that Warlock can struggle against, particularly Weapon Rogue gets through uh, Quest Warlock quite nicely. So this could help against that, but it's not really good against anything else because the way Quest Warlock works, for example, Quest Handlock, is you just kill your opponent, either with your own fatigue damage inflicted upon them or with minions, you know, Flesh Giants, Battle Masters, stuff like that. And this doesn't fit that. Now, you could get rid of the minions and just say, all right, my two win conditions now are fatiguing myself and then giving my opponent these curses. Um, but that would be a slightly different deck, so we'd have to rebuild that once this comes out and take a look at it. This is a really cool card. This will, I think, absolutely see play at some point. I don't know where, though. I don't think it's in Quest Hand Warlock, because you would have to run at least two. And I don't know if the deck uh, to actually effectively counter something like Weapon Rogue. And I don't think the deck has that much space right now. Very cool card, though. It's a, it's a very strong card. Next up, Spawn of Deathwing. Five mana, six, six... Dragon. Battle cry, destroy a random enemy minion. Also, discard a random card. 5 mana, 6-6, six, six, destroy a random enemy minion. Fucking nutty. Excuse my language. We'll bleep that out, it's fine. That's just nutty. Discard a random card. Not great, but like... Body's good. Um, is, is, is it good enough to play now? No. Absolutely not. We're playing like 2 mana flesh giants. I don't care about this. Cool card, again. Broken record. Post-rotation, maybe. Right now, absolutely not. Next up, Warrior. Shoulder check. One mana, tradable spell. Give a minion plus two plus one and rush. Okay, what are we rushing? Minions, I guess. We don't really have a minion-centric warrior deck right now. We have some slow charge warrior stuff. And this doesn't really fit into those lists. So if we move into something a bit more minion centric, again, we could run this. And the fact that it's tradable is an upside. But right now, it does not look very exciting. Doesn't look very good. Next up, Onyxian Drake. 4 mana, 4, 5 dragon. Taunt. Stat line's okay. Battle cry, deal damage equal to your armor to an enemy minion. Shield slam. Cool. On a stick. Nice. 4 mana. Yeah. The upside of Shield Slam is that you can just kill a thing very efficiently. And you lose some of that flexibility when it's on a stick. And by a stick, I mean it's a minion. Because your opponent could chip off your armor by the time you play this. So it's hard to do in one turn. Or if you do in one turn, you have to spend more mana on doing it. You could run this and Shield Slams also in the same deck. It's not bad. Just have this as an extra thing. And then just a taunt in the way. But that's not a deck. So if we're slotting this into a different deck that has a win condition, this could be okay. Right now, we don't have slots for this in our current warrior decks, but post-rotation, we should. Probably okay post-rotation. Right now, not good enough. Hit it very hard. <laughs> very nice. Uh, one mana spell. There's a lot of WoW references here, World of Warcraft references, uh, which is really, really, really nice. The uh, the mini set is a Nixia's Lair. And there's um, some Onyxia ref references here, which is very nice. Anyways, hit it very hard. One mana spell. Gain plus 10 attack and can't attack heroes this turn. Okay. How is that useful? It's kind of like a shield slam, right? You just kill a thing. 10 attack will likely kill a thing. Um, potential other upsides. Soulbound Ashtung, Silas. You can run a, a an OTK deck where you Silas the Soulbound Ashtung to your opponent's side of the board, the Ashtung takes, uh, makes you take damage equal to how much damage it takes. So you could play Silas, the Ashtung, two of these. That's 10 mana. Your opponent takes 20. 
Not bad. You throw in some shield slams like the old days. You gain some armor. Okay. Sure. Pretty good card. We do not run it now. We might try to make a Silas deck, but I don't think that's going to be very good right now. Um, but yeah, this is just a good card. Very flexible, which is what Warrior wants to do, right? Take that, take take use of the hero power, armor up, and then use efficient resources to clear stuff. And this is very efficient. Can't go face, unlucky. But, you know, still pretty good. Next up, neutrals. Five neutrals. And they are all... They are not all dragons. Um, start with Anixia. Raid boss Anixia. 10 mana, 8-8 eight, eight dragon. Rush. Immune while you control whelp. Battle cry summon six two one whelps with rush. So ten mana eight eight rush with six two one rushes, and it's immune as long as there's a whelp on the board. Wow, this is very strong. Ten mana, haha, very funny, but very strong. And again, if the meta does slow down, excellent. Uh, right now, I think only Druid can really use this. Maybe a Priest or a Warrior. But the effect is quite strong. Because it, again, not only has a big body, it's a threat, but it also is removal, right? 6-2 and Whelps with Rush. You can clear a lot of stuff with that. And the 8-8 Rush body itself. Very cool. Very cool. Strong card. Expensive. Doesn't fit everywhere. In fact, it fits almost nowhere right now, but it could get better. Cool. Next up, Kazakasan. 8 mana, 8 8 dragon. Battle cry. If all minions in your deck are dragons, craft a, craft a custom deck of treasures. And my understanding is that this uh, is not here. No, it, it takes from uh, the duels treasures, and there's quite a variety of duels treasures. And it's uh, an Archivist Deliciana type effect where they give you three options, and you pick one. And you do that 10 times, I believe. If it's 10, I think it's 10 times. And then your deck is replaced with the 10 things that you discovered. So it can be pretty high value stuff. Or it can just delay fatigue for 10 turns. So this is kind of cool. Um, this is like the new sort of control finisher type thing. Interesting, interesting. Oh, it's five times and you get two each pick. I see. So you do add 10 cards, but it's five doubles. So kind of like a Luciana. Now... Uh, playing this on curve doesn't really happen too much because you don't. There's not that many dragons that you can run in. Uh, you could build a deck that's only Kazakus and then just spells, but I don't think you want that. I think the 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 common way to use this will just be to delay fatigue by a little bit. Cool card, very slow, fits in like again almost no decks and fits in no decks right now, but might see some play uh, post rotation. We'll have some fun with this once it comes out, but it will not be actually viable. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that it'll have a very low win rate. If you're running a Kazakus deck, uh, once the mini set comes out. Anyways, Welp Bonker, 3 mana, 1 5. Frenzy and Honorable Kill draw a card. Similar to Accolade of Pain. Um, but if this dies in one hit, it does not draw any cards, which is a problem. So is 3 mana draw a card good enough? If it's frenzied, maybe. Some decks might be able to use this efficiently, right? There will be some whirlwind effects. Provoke, maybe, in Warrior. It almost never honorably kills. Could be used in a buff deck. Maybe in Paladin. It's got a big butt. 5 health. And card draw, which also benefits having buffs. This will see play. This is a good card. You'll have to do some stuff to make it work, but this looks like a good card to me. Yeah, Priest plus Blast. That's an option as well. Interesting. Next up, and you can get this from Rally. That's something to note. You can play Rally, and that is both in Priest and Paladin. Oh, there's some cool applications of this. Good card. Gear Grabber. 4 mana, 4, 5. Taunt. If you end your turn without, with any unspent mana, reduce this card's cost by 1. Nope, I don't like it. So it banks mana from your mana that you float, but that extra mana only goes into this card. I don't think it's worth it. I'd rather just spend my mana efficiently the first however many turns. More of an arena card. Anixian Warder, 5 mana, 3, 6 dragon. Battle cry, if you're holding a dragon, summon 2 and whelps with rush. Relatively fair. Not super crazy. And you have to hold dragons, which is not easy to do right now because there's not that many dragons. Meh. It's meh. It's not good. Um, again, post rotation, when we don't have enough stuff to put in our decks, this will probably see play because it's an acceptable way to fight for board. 
But other than that, meh. So cool. I like the design of a lot of these cards. I also like that a lot of these cards confuse me. I, I, I don't really know where to slot them in, which means that there should be some exciting stuff coming up um, with the next expansion. There are also enough cards to try to, to play around with. We saw quite a few options here. Some decks will get a couple of new toys. Some decks will get no new toys, but that's okay. This looks like a pretty good setup for the uh, the new expansion. All right. Honestly, this this is okay. This will not be a, a, an incredibly impactful mini set. I don't think too many decks are going to change because of this, but we might see some slight shifts, which I think is okay. Yeah, it seems like more of a setup. Anyways, that's my card review. Hope you guys liked it. Uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out a bunch of other videos we have here. We got some arena videos. We got some standard guides, patch notes, discussion, bunch of stuff. Go check them out. Thanks for hanging and have fun with the mini set.